I'm back. I'm back. Hey, Donnie. Good to see you, man. Glad you're here. I don't know what that was. One of my friends said that Facebook is recording me, or somebody's recording me. More power to him. Let me turn this light on. Hello, 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 hello. Hey, Deacon Bernita, I see you. Hey, Kelly. Kelly in Minneapolis. So I see you. Appreciate your commentary over the last uh, few days and all of the live shots from Minneapolis. We thank you for making sure we are up to speed on what is happening on the ground in Minneapolis. Um, how's everybody? These are, these are challenging times. Challenging times. Um, hey, Jean. Dr. Claudette, I see you all. While folks are joining in, I invite you to hit share on your page. Uh, tag and share, tag and share, as my friend Coletta says, so we can uh, share this these comments with others. Um, it is Wednesday in the nation's capital. Um, kind of a dreary day outside. And hey, Kaji, thanks for your good work. House of the Lord, I see you. I see you. Hey, Sora, hello, Nina. Thanks for joining, Flos. Thanks for joining. Um, a hard night last night. Uh, I live kind of near the protesters, and so there were helicopters overhead flying pretty low um, for much of the evening, and that jangled my nerves uh, somewhat. Um, but here we are. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Wednesday Word. Uh, the good thing you know about Facebook Live is you can see yourself, so I can see that my glasses need cleaning. So let me start there while we're waiting for folks to join. It has been a number of difficult days, um, but let's go in. Let's go in. Welcome to the Wednesday Word um, for Wednesday, June 3rd. Um, glad to see so many of you joining, and I hope that as you are coming in that you are sharing this, starting a watch party so others on your of your Facebook friends who may not be my Facebook friends can join in and uh, hear what uh, the conversation is going to be today. I was, as I was prepping for, for this, um, I was I was struggling about what my place and my role, the role that I should take in this, because I wear so many different hats, uh, as you you who are watching me know. And in this particular moment, I I I was saying, now what do I what do I what do I say today? Who am I today? Do I stand in the office of prophet? Do I stand in the office of priest? Do I stand in the office of pastor? In our tradition, in our church's mission statement, um, we say that our ministries are prophetic, critiquing society from a biblical perspective, which places God on the side of the oppressed, the exploited, the impoverished, and the outcast. We say that our ministries are priestly, interceding through with God through prayer, fasting, rituals, and ceremony. And we say that our ministries are pastoral, healing, providing healing, counseling, and direction. You can find our full mission statement on our website, holc.org, holc.org. Um, and then we also say our ministries are political, programmatic, and pedagogic. But for today, I'm dealing with the prophetic, the pastoral, and the priestly, and trying to navigate my way through um, those three hats and, and, and which is it that I wanted to do today? Because uh, 
primarily through the Wednesday Word, I have been functioning and using this space as a pastoral priestly moment to hopefully provide you with inspiration and encouragement, uh, edification as we try to navigate the days of our lives, particularly while we're in these COVID times. But the events of the last uh, 10 days or so uh, since George Floyd was killed on May 25th, since Christian Cooper was accosted in the park on May 25th, it's been nine days, has me squarely uh, tipping the scales, if you will, on my role as prophet, as oracle. Someone called me last week a public theologian. And so what I'm coming to see in my own life is the way that you weave these threads together. Uh, So I'm going to alternate, I think. I'm going to dance between the three lines, if you will, today. Um, It's been nine days since George Floyd was lynched, because that's what it was. He was lynched on the streets of Minneapolis. It's been nine days since Amy Cooper's privilege was on full display for the world to see in her encounter with Christian Cooper in the park. And George Floyd's death was the match that lit an already uh, smoldering fire. And I want to be sure to call the name of Breonna Taylor I don't want her to get lost. I want us to remember this woman, an EMT, who was shot in her own home, in her own bed, by unclo- un, uh, ununiformed police officers who were served, who uh, who who arrived without a warrant, looking for somebody, and they came and uh, shot her in her own bed, wrong house wrong house, not safe in your own home, not safe jogging Ahmaud Arbery, not safe walking in your neighborhood, Trayvon Martin, not safe asking a police officer question, Randolph Evans, not safe shopping, George Floyd, just not safe. And I don't know if my white friends, and I have tons of white friends, and I love them all, and they have been incredibly warm and loving and sympathetic and holding me and all of us in their hearts and in their hands and not attempting, at least my white friends, not attempting to white explain or fix it or solve it, just knowing that they love me and they're reaching out to me has been incredibly rewarding. But I don't know, you hear black people today saying, we tired, we tired, we just tired. And uh, for some, that is a statement of physical and mental fatigue and exhaustion. It is because we're doing a lot and it's still COVID and you still got too many Zoom calls and too many phone calls and too many other things. So we are physically and emotionally tired, but right in through here, when you hear black people say we tired, it is a statement of, it is a covering, a box, uh, a bow tied on to the emotions of we are, it, it, it covers rage, disappointment, frustration, all tied together and we don't know how to say all of that so we just say we tired we tired or if you really you just forget the are you just tired tired just tired tired of everything so in in the mix of 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 floyd and brianna and cooper and and all of all of what's happening right now it makes you question (laughs) 
your loyalty to this country. It makes you wonder if it can ever really be better, if anything will ever change. And that that worry, that that hope, that hopelessness, that frustration is exacerbated by this idiot in the White House um, who just, the callousness. What he did the other night in mowing down protesters who exercise in their First Amendment rights, in using rubber bullets and tear gas to disperse people who are simply standing on the grounds of their house. We pay for that house. We are American citizenry. We live in this country. The White House is our house, and to be told we can't exercise our rights at our own house to be moved and pushed out of the way so this man could go and stand before in front of a church. As a woman of faith, as a woman of God, as an oracle of God, it was the most egregious and insulting display of empire that I have ever seen. It struck me in my core as he stood there with his coterie of white advisors in front of St. John's Church to take this, to have this photo op without telling the pastor he was coming. I saw the pastor on CNN and he said he was on the line with the protesters. And there this idiot is in front of the church using our sacred text to make a point, a political point with his base. And then the next day he goes to St. Paul's to the Catholic place here in DC and does the same thing. And he and Melania stand in front of God's altar for pictures. I was shocked that the fire of God didn't fall from heaven right there and burn him up. But, you know, I was angry about that, but is that worse? Is that worse than what our evangelical, our white evangelical brothers and sisters do every day? Their silence is deafening in this moment. I've been waiting. I've been waiting to see if this wasn't the moment George Floyd's killing in the, in the face of video cameras, in the face of witnesses, if this wasn't the moment that white evangelicals would finally say something. Finally say something. And they've been silent. The only people we've heard out of them, I guess they're using all of their energy to pursue these lawsuits so they could open their buildings and open their churches, pursuing what they call freedom of religion, which as I preached on Sundays, really the, the freedom to become a hotbed of infection. But they have nothing to say. What God is that that they serve? And I'm using that with a small g, because it's not the same God that I serve. I'm troubled in this moment as I watch what is coming from the White House. The, the threat of the use of military, the military, the military. And, and now remember, a lot of the military are our sons and daughters who have enlisted as a way to find economic stability or because they want to serve. So you're going to have the military, which is our own people, our children, come and police us, police their own neighborhoods with a show of force and military gear because we're demanding, we're choosing to exercise the rights guaranteed to us by this constitution we are supposed to be living by. What in... I don't understand. I don't understand. And I don't understand. And I'm not even going to talk about the looting. I'm, I'm not even going to get there because it... I'm going to send you back to Exodus where when the children of Israel left uh, Egyptian, when they, Egypt, when they decided to leave Egypt, the Bible says that they carried the spoils of Egypt with them, that they took the gold and the silver with them into their new land. Now, I'm not excusing 
uh, uh, any violence. I'm not excusing the killings, unnecessarily killings of innocent people, anybody, really. These protests should not be about killing anybody or taking anybody's life. I also want to call out in, the, in, in this conversation about the looting, I want to call out these far-right neo-Nazi uh, folks who have infiltrated the marches. The far left folks, the anarchists who are infiltrating and you can go on Instagram and YouTube and all and see the videos of white folks breaking the glass, handing out bricks and walking away while our people get blamed for it. So I want to draw a distinction between some of all of this looting that's going on. Pay attention. Do your homework. This is not a wholesale thing. At the same time, you know, listen. I'm concerned about what happens after this is all over and how do people eat when there are no grocery stores? How seniors get their medication when the pharmacies are gone? Where we bank when there's no banks because they've all closed. And so where do you stand as a person of faith in this moment and how do you make sense of all this and hold this bucket in your hands and keep moving and keep living and keep hoping and keep praying and keep getting out of bed and putting one foot in front of the other. And, and I went, I was taken to the book of the prophet Habakkuk. Habakkuk, I know some of y'all don't know him. He's at, the, he's at the end, near the end of the Old Testament. You know, he's one of the small books. It's only three chapters long. Uh, some of y'all don't know about Habakkuk or Obadiah or Nahum, some of those minor prophets, but that's okay. That's okay. I was taken to the prophet Habakkuk and what he says uh, in his very short book. And because it is so short, I want you to... Um, take a moment and read it. But he starts in one, in chapter one, and maybe this is why I was drawn um, to this passage. He starts chapter one, how long, O Lord, must I call for help? And you do not listen or cry out to you about violence and you do not save. Why do you ongoing and conflict escalates that is why the law is ineffective and justice never emerges for the wicked restrict the righteous therefore justice comes out perverted the prophet is taking his complaint to God taking his message to God and saying you got to fix this I don't understand what's happening but I need you to step in here right now with something to say tell me something and it so reflects our own experience god where are you tell us something tell us where to go how to go when to go we need some direction lord most of all we need to know that you're watching that you're listening that you're involved you're engaged and you know what our complaint is and what our process is and what our problem is right now in this moment lord where are you and as we stand in this pentecost season where is the god of the pentecost who comes to dwell inside of us that empowers us and indwells us and moves us forward. Where is the God of Pentecost? That's who we're looking for, the God that brings radical change, that the God that disrupts. That's what the Holy Spirit does. It changes, it disrupts, it refines, it purifies, it moves old things out of the way. It starts new things. That's what the Holy Spirit is. Where is the God of the Pentecost in this moment? That's what Habakkuk was crying for. And the Lord answers and says, look at the nations and observe, be utterly astounded for something is happening right now. Something is taking place in your days right now while you live and you will not believe it. And in years to come, when the children talk about it, they won't believe that all of this happened while you were alive. 
God is working in our midst and we have to be sensitive to what God is saying and what God is doing. As the chapter continues, we get to Habakkuk's last point and last piece of what he wants to say after he's heard from God. This is chapter three at the end. But I want you in this moment to understand, and I see the comments, and you're absolutely right. Silence is complicit. I understand that my broadcast is being interrupted. Let me say this to you. Watch what you're saying on Facebook, y'all. There was a young woman arrested last night in St. Louis. One of our babies, one of our young people. She had posted on Facebook about the rallies and encouraging people to go to the rallies. She was arrested on federal terrorism charges. Federal, young woman never been arrested, never been in trouble. She just put on her Facebook page, join me downtown for this rally. We gonna really F things up tonight. The feds showed up at her house and arrested her on federal terrorism charges. You know what kind of, that's major. And they told her mama no bail. They were looking at her Facebook posts. Do I need to say more about that? Tell your babies, tell your babies, mind what they saying on these social media channels. We're going to have to go back to the old school way, the way I was raised, where you get the word out through means other than on these social media channels. We become addicted and too relying on them. Mind your babies. A word to the wise is sufficient. As I preached on Sunday at Pentecost, and I want you to, when you have a 15 minutes, because I only preach for 15 minutes, go on my Facebook page and find Sunday's sermon, Where's the Fire? Or you can go to my YouTube page and find the sermon there, Where's the Fire? What I want, what, what came present to me is we're looking for God to do something, but God has empowered us, has empowered us, has empowered us to be God's agents in this moment at this time. That's what the Holy Spirit is for. That's what the Spirit of God living in you and surrounding you is for, to empower you, to move you forward, to help you be the oracle of God. You don't need a preacher. You don't need a priest. You don't need a prophet. You are the oracle of God by virtue of the Spirit of God that lives in you. What are you going to do in this moment? For white folks, get smarter about racism. I'm not here to teach you about racism. I don't have time and I'm tired. But you can learn, read a book, find out what find out what you can do. Some of us can't be in the streets right now as a pandemic. We're immunocompromised. We got other issues. We don't want to be in the streets. That's okay. You don't have to. Find an organization that you can align with. Contribute to a bail fund. Find out who's giving out food. Do some, there is something you can do in this moment to raise your voice, to take action against what we're seeing right now. But in all of this, never give up your faith. Never give up your faith. And I return to the prophet Habakkuk at the end of his book, after he had heard from the Lord and the Lord had assured him that change was coming, that he was not absent, that everything was going, that God had it all in control and the prophet needed to do the things that prophet needed to do. And God called out all the people and all the wrongdoing. Habakkuk replies at the end, though the fig tree shall not blossom, and though there be no fruit in the vine, though there be no sheep in the, in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. God is my strength and he makes my feet like hind feet. And what he's saying is, though I can't see the victory right now, and though it looks, even though what my natural vision can see, is incomplete and is unsatisfactory and unsatisfying. What I need to do is use my spiritual vision and look ahead, even though I don't have evidence, though the fig tree shall not blossom. I don't see no fruit right now. What I see right now is barren leaves. What I see right now is, is emptiness. What I see right now is frustration. 
But let me look ahead. Let me look forward. Let me try to see with another set of eyes. And let me look and see these demonstrations that are happening that are multiracial and multicultural. It's not just black people. It is white people, brown people, native people, Asian people across this country, straight, gay, trans. Everyone's coming together to say, this has to change. This has to stop. When have we ever seen that in this country? It is our white friends reaching out to us to care for us, to love on us, to make sure we're okay. It is the building of a new community that is happening right now in this moment. And if this moment hadn't occurred, we'd still be in our bunkers. We'd still be, you know, in our, in our corners. Living our lives like nothing happened. Some of us aware and some of us blissfully happy, not having to have any kind of consciousness. But see what God is doing, even in the midst of the turmoil. And I'm not trying to say God calls the Trump turmoil, but God uses what's happening to move us to a different place. So though the fig tree shall not blossom, though I can't see it, though it looks barren to me, though it looks unsatisfactory, though I'm angry about it, yet I'm going to keep my hand in God's hand and keep my eye on what God is doing to see what is this new thing that is being birthed in our midst. What is this new occasion that we have to rise? What is this new opportunity that is being presented to us to create new community? To create new community. This is where we are. This is what I encourage you with. This is where I leave you as I navigate prophet, priest, and pastor. Yes, these are difficult times. It's hard. 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 But you know what? We There have been difficult days before, and we have difficult days ahead. It's not over. It's not going to be over for a long time. But that's okay. God's taken us someplace. Figure out what you can do. Figure out how you can be part of God's plan for new community, part of God's plan for new heaven and new earth. Find your place. Don't be on the side of do nothing. Do something. Find something to do. Join an organization. Register people to vote. Register people to vote. Register people to vote. Provide groceries. Send bail money. All of these things you can do to help us create the new heaven and the new earth right here where we live. God bless you. I love you. I look forward to being in contact with you. Thank you for the messages of love and care and connection that you've been sending to me. I appreciate you. And again, if you missed any of this, and I understand there have been interruptions, we will try to post it on our YouTube page, repost it on Facebook. Also, uh, check out my Sunday sermon on my Facebook page and also on my YouTube page. Where's the fire? Where's the fire? Where's the fire? It's only 15 minutes. I'm not a long preacher. So take, take a moment and check that out. I think you'd be encouraged and inspired. God love you. God bless you. I love you. And we stay safe, stay healthy. And um, let's build this new world together. God bless you.